Hello everyone and welcome to this new video from Free Dreams 106 channel. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back talking about 3D printers with a new multicolor machine from Flashforge. I'm talking about the, the AD5X. So in this video, we'll see the unboxing, my first impressions and the first prints I've made with the Flashforge mu first multicolor machine. And in the meantime, I'll also tell you a bit about its technical specifications. So let's cut the chase and get into it. Let's start by talking about the unboxing. The printer in question is the Flashforge AD5X in what we might call the basic version, with the multicolor unit but without the enclosure. The box is similar in style to other multicolor printers with the Core XY structure. The machine arrives almost completely assembled and well protected thanks to several layers of foam. The only thing we need to assemble are the multicolor unit, which in case of Flashforge is called EFS, and the printed. Then we can unlock the print bed and start the automatic calibration of the machine. So in no time at all, we'll be up and running and ready to print. As you can see, the EFS is very different from the multicolor solution we are used to, such as Bumble Labs AMS or Anycubics Ace Pro. In fact, this unit is not enclosed like the ones I just mentioned, but consists in a block that is mounted on the side of the printer. The system is then completed by four spool holders that use springs to hold the spools in place when loading them into the multicolor unit. It's a different system with pros and cons that we'll explore in more detail in the course of the video. Along with the machine and the EFS, you will find several accessories in the box such as tool for assembling and maintaining the machine, sample of four different filaments and the very handy accessories that I would love to see on old printers. This small bar that helps us clean the hot end in case of clogs or simply during routine maintenance. Well, now that we have assembled it, let's have some fun with printing and talking about a few technical specifications. As you can guess, the AD5X is very similar to Bamboo Lab's B1 series, but much cheaper. Consider that the AD5X package with the multicolor unit and the enclosure costs only $450, about 390 euros, compared to the 700 euros for the P1S with the AMS. It's a huge price difference. This machine, in fact, is marketed as an affordable and customizable multicolor printer, with the option of purchasing the enclosure at a later date and other, adding later other accessories such as the camera. It is also intended as a printer suitable for those who want to approach the world of 3D printing for the first time. In fact, there's a whole range of features that simplify our life, such as self leveling automatic Z-offset, vibration compensation, and different pre-made slicing profiles. But let's start by looking at some prints I made with this machine. As I mentioned in every video review, as soon as I receive a new machine, I use one of the test files provided by the manufacturer to check that everything is working properly. So, the first print was this Flashforge coin, which allowed me to check that everything was working correctly. The print came out perfectly without any problems, so I started slicing other things with the Orca Flashforge, the slicer provided by the manufacturer. As you can guess from the name, it's simply uh, Orca Slicer with a different logo. There aren't particular changes in the software, but you will also find profiles for this machine on the original Orca Slicer if you prefer to have all your printer in one place. By the way, if you have no idea what Orca Slicer is, I've made a couple of videos about this software, although it has been updated with new very interesting features, so let me know in the comments if you would like a new video about it. 
Then I got straight, straight to the action with a project that allowed me to test these printer's capabilities a little. In fact, I decided to realize a model of this beautiful 9-piston radial engine for my engine collection. I printed all the components and assembled them to achieve this stunning final result. As my first project on this machine, I was very satisfied with the print quality. So then I decided to move on to my first multicolor print with this printer, which is a simple one, a small modification for the A5X XL. You see, this pool holder has the numbers on the back, so it can be a little bit difficult to read. So I decided to print these little markers to always be able to see at a glance which tube uh, the filament has to be inserted into. As a simple first multicolor print, I would say the result is perfect. Obviously, as with other multicolor machines, the AZ AD5X produces waste and ejects it at the back of the printer. So, I recommend printing a bin or shoot of some kind to avoid having plastic pellets all over your house. I then decided to send another multicolor project to print using this machine, so I could realize my first Fletch Forge, a light house bookmark. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the video coming soon about this amazing update for Uforge. As you can see, the print came out very well and the machine had no problem with the color changes required to complete this image. But I want to show you another multicolor print I made with this little beast, a model of one of the latest Star Wars spaceships, which is very nice. Again, as you can see, the prints had no problem with color changes. And to change the filament, with the basic settings, the AD5X takes about 1 minute and 30 seconds. It's faster than the Cobra S1, which takes about 2 minutes to change this pool, but a little bit slower than the P1S, which, which takes about 1 minute. Obviously, the duration varies depending on the purge volume, but these are the values in the standard configuration. And then made a few more prints with this machine, for example, this USB holder that I designed, which looks great with the glitter filament, or these two simple uh, twisty puzzles that you see right there for the collection. I then use a few more different types of filaments to print various stents uh, with different finishes. And I must say that it lays down the layers very well. The prints are very smooth and I didn't notice any particular stringing even on the most challenging prints. But now let's move on to the pros and cons because I want you to talk about a few more things. Let's start with the pros. First of all, the price. As I mentioned before, the printer is really cheap and we can buy the basic version with the multicolor unit at a really great price because on JIC buying the machine costs only 349 euros with shipping from Germany and with my discount code you can take it home for only 329 euros which is a really bargain price. Of course I leave all the links below in the description in case you are interested and I'd like to thank JIC buying tour for sending me this printer to share my review. The second advantage of this machine is its size. In terms of printing volume, we are looking at a standard value of 220 mm cube, but look how compact it is. Multicolor printers with units such as the Ace Pro take up a lot of space, and if you don't have a very large workstation, it can be really annoying. So a compact machine is definitely an advantage. Third, speed. Like the most modern Corex Way printers, the AD5X is designed to print at high speeds, saving us a lot of time. The values are similar to those equivalent models, such as the Cobra S1, the X1 or P1 series from Bambulab, or the K1 and K2 series from Creality. 
Fourth, the feature it offers makes 3D printing really easy. As I mentioned earlier, we have auto-leveling, auto-z offset, vibration compensation, but that's not all. The nozzle is designed to be changed quickly. The machine is equipped with the filament sensor to avoid losing uh, long prints if we run out of a spool. And the printers arrives 90% assembled, so it really makes a lot of the hassle out of printing. The last big pro of this machine is the multicolor unit. It works very well and it's a simpler system than the ones I mentioned earlier, so it lets, is less prone to breakage and more compact. I'm honestly really happy with Flashforge EFS. And to keep technical filaments dry, closed units are more convenient, but no one is stopping us from using a separate dryer and loading the filament directly from there into the F EFS. On the other hand, we won't have any problems with cardboard spools as we it can happen on uh, AMS or Ace Pro. Now let's move on to the cons that I noticed, which are two in particular. First of all, tolerances. I printed a test to measure them, and let's say that a usable value when designing, prototyping, and producing with this printer is around 0 0.3, 0 0.25 millimeters. Why is this a con? because modern printers straight out of the box usually offer tighter tolerances, so a greater precision. In fact, in terms of, of accuracy, I've noticed that it rounds corners a lot. The tolerance and the precision of the printer can be improved with some simple calibrations, such as pressure advance, but I want to point out this anyway to give a complete assessment of the performance of this machine straight out of the box. The other downside is more a firmware-related issue, in my opinion, which is that the printer tends to keep the Z-offset a little tight if you don't level it before printing, so it squashes the first layer a bit. If you activate automatic leveling, the first layer is fine, and I've noticed that with the update they recently released, the, um, there was an improvement, so I think this hole will be completely gone with the next firmware update. Obviously, if you buy the enclosure, you will be able to print technical materials such as ABS more easily, as they need that to, keep, to be kept warm. Also because this printer can heat up the nozzle up to 300 degrees and the plate up to 110 degrees. However, for beginners or those who are not used to printing filaments other than PLA, PETG and TPU, this printer will work perfectly, even without a closed chamber. Furthermore, even though it was released recently, all spare parts are already available on Flashforge website, in case you need different nozzles or other accessories. Honestly, I really like this printer. I find it a great option to start with, especially for those who want to try multicolor printing without spending too much, and for those who are not interested yet in technical materials, but want the option of a be able to print, the to print them later on. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the Flash 4 AD5X and in the meantime if you like this video you might also like this.